Good morning. You're at the Van Gogh Museum. I'm senior researcher Tayo Maidendorp, and we're here on the occasion of Loving Vincent, a wonderful animation film going into premiere soon all over the world. And I'm here together with you, Welshman, who is uh, the writer, director, co-director, co-writer, producer of this film. Uh, he's been busy for three years doing this. Three, four years, you? Oh, six. Six, six years. years. Yeah, six yeah. Years this, years. this is my sixth year. Yeah. Sixth year, come on. <laughs> <laughs> well, we know, all know that animation takes a long time. Yeah, right? especially if you're painting every frame. Yeah. And that's exactly what you did. And yeah. that makes the film so exceptional, you might say. Money paintings of Van Gogh functioned as an example in the film. Yeah. So it's completely hand-painted, as you said. Over 70 paintings are in the film. Yeah. A couple of them from the Van Gogh Museum. And one of them is this one. The wheat field with crows. Absolutely. This one's very important because not only is it in the film, it was actually the first test that we ever did back in 2012. Uh, we even did an earlier one back in 2011. And both times we did wheat field with crows and it very much set the style and made us believe that we could actually make this film when we saw the results of yeah. that. Because what did you do? when you put this into animation, into motion, what do you do? I mean, you pick this as an example? Yeah. Well, this, this one is uh, a very hard one to paint, but it's actually uh, one of the simpler ones to animate, which is probably why we chose it at the beginning. It's already lots of vibration um, in it. Yeah, in, in, in a way. So, yeah. so, I mean, really it's about animating the crows um, and also about the, just a bit of movement in the, in the sky. Yeah. Um, so uh, it's not as, as complicated as some of the other ones where we, ha we actually have to you know of his life? all of these in pasto yeah, yeah, brush yeah, strokes yeah, frame right. by frame. Yeah. across the canvas. How many, how many paintings did you make for the whole film? 65,000. 65,000. Yeah, so we had a team, team of 125 painters working yeah. over two years. Yeah. And um, something like this uh, is, it would be, when we have this in the film, uh, probably each frame of the painting, the first frame would have taken two days to paint, so a bit, bit slower than Vincent, you know. A bit slower, well, he, he would do this in, in the morning. <laughs> he, he would do it in a couple of hours. We, we, yeah. It took us a couple of days to do yeah. the same thing. Um, and then each frame with animating all of the crows coming out of the, of the wheat and obviously we also invade our main character Armand Roulant yeah. into this painting. In this picture, yeah. um, it probably took an hour for each of the subsequent frames. frames. Um, but there were ones in the film, you know, like uh, Starry Night at the beginning of with course, the big yeah, moving yeah. shot and, and the person who was animating that, it was taking him six hours to do every frame. So <laughs> two weeks to do a single And it's second. 12 frames in a second, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so two weeks to do, to do a second. What I liked in the film about this painting when you, when, you, when you used it is that among comes comes along from the left and enters it yeah um, and there are no crows there's one crow fly, flying away I believe the, yeah and then it's completely in, yeah. quiet and then there is always a question with this painting for many people including me because yeah. it's it's a painting of anxiety it's it's in this last weeks that he he, he lived in in over Suvaza and this is impending doom yeah in the sense these crows are flying up and there's always the question are the flows flying towards you or are they going away yeah. Now, Armand in the film throws the stick into the wheat field yeah. and then the crows fly away. And that's yeah. always exactly how I thought it, 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 that they were doing it, they were flying away. But many people believe that they're coming towards you. And that probably has to do with something of the anxiety that you feel in a painting like this, yeah. Vincent's anxiety at the same time. It's about how you experience it as crows flying towards you or simply crows flying. Yeah, I mean, this, this is, is a very dramatic painting, yeah. tempestuous skies, um, a lot of kind of that movement in it. Yeah. So uh, it was always going to be in the film for that reason, yeah. um, especially, you know, as we were concentrating around his last weeks and what was happening around his death. Um, but also, um, it's such a famous painting, uh, and we, we felt that because of also previous films, like Lust for Life, we, we had to yeah, yeah, have yeah. Our, our take <laughs> on, on this, in, it, this painting. If you make a film of Hochen, especially his last weeks, his last month, it, you know, you, you, yeah, it has to be in there. And so, and, and, and for us, uh, very much it, it had to be that they were going away. Yeah. Because, you know, it was all in the film, crows are almost related to Vincent in some way. Yeah. So when they yeah. appear in the film, they're yeah. related to Vincent. And so Armand is, is chasing the story of, of Vincent yeah. van Gogh. Yeah. And, and so they, he sees these crows and then they disappear. It's almost like he almost gets there, but he doesn't. Mm. But he doesn't, exactly. Disappear from him. Yeah. Let's go to another painting that you, that, that you used for the, uh, for the animation. And yeah. This one, perhaps not many people would know this painting or recognize it, or because it's not so known. I've always loved it very much because 
very, very uh, lustrous brushstroke. I mean, the, the acolytes that you see there, it's wonderfully painted. It's an evening scene yeah. in auvers sur oise at the castle of Auvers that you see in the distance. Yeah. And in this, it is a dusk scene, so it's, it's the twilight scene at, at the end of the day. Yeah, so, I mean, he, he chose a particular moment in time. And, I mean, yeah. I always love this from the first time I, I came to the, the museum because it's totally different to see it in the flesh as it is oh, on yeah, paper. This, this is just yeah. one of the, the, the most brilliant landscapes uh, for me. And, and also, another reason why we wanted to have it in the film was because he has this beautiful description in his letter about this, about how the light was changing over a period of yeah. two hours. Yeah. And, of course... Yeah. He could only capture one moment of that two hours. Exactly. We because, in the yeah, film, yeah. we started off um, with a, a kind of a darkening blue sky, and then yeah. went into this incredible gold sky. Gold sky. And you know, we have this time yeah. lapse in front of your eyes, and and that's one of the things that you can you can do in in film is that you course, you yeah. can add. Yeah you know, change over time and you can add story. And, and that's why I think that, that our film is, um, you know, it's, it's a different uh, art it's form a, than painting, but it, it's You experience it in a different way. I remember that also for, from the, in, in the film is that the yellow house at a night scene, which is beautiful. And you have to tone down all the yellows to bluish colors as well and, and yeah. all the, these nights. And it's wonderful. And also the, the, the yeah. one of the sous the, 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 the Well, you know, with the Yellow House, I mean, it's, it's a very optimistic painting yeah. done at a time when, you know, he was building this this And he this, was just, this just lived there. Yeah, this is my place. he just moved in. Yeah. He just had the, yeah. the gas installed. Yeah. And so he was very excited. And also it's the place of greatest tragedy for yeah. him. Yeah. And, yeah. and very much in the film, we wanted to... Um, take some of his very optimistic yeah. kind of bright paintings and take them into the murkier underworld and obviously um, taking it into the night and we wanted to use the, his nighttime paintings yeah. as, as the way to, to translate that into nighttime. Well, that's where you succeeded very well. Well, let's, let's go to the, the wall over there. You, uh, in, in, in the film, well, it focuses on the last months of, of, of Vincent in the sense that Armand Roulin, so the son of the postman Roulin that he knew from Ireland and who, whom he painted, yeah. uh, is trying to get a grip on what exactly happened uh, in, in Auvers, where Vincent, uh, as, as we always promoted, yeah. uh, killed himself. And, yeah. uh, and whether did he kill himself? Did something else happen? We know from, from the past, there have been different stories been going around in, in biographies and things about, yeah. uh, about his death. And Armand is looking for people in Auvers who can tell him Maybe yeah. what happened, but he doesn't but really. Ev but everyone's telling him everyone a different is, story. Exactly, everyone and, is telling you know, a different like, story. Like a detective from a, from a film noir, yeah. uh, he yeah. has to work out you know, who's lying, who's telling the truth, exactly. who's exaggerating yeah. their role in Vincent's life. And this yeah. actually happened. You know, after it's, his life, people were like, oh, yes, we were really good friends with him. Or, oh, yes, it was oh, yeah, really crazy. Especially or, years after, when, when Vincent got more known. Yeah. The beginning, of course, completely forgotten. He was just not a crazy painter, perhaps, from, from over there. But yeah. when his name got about and there was more promotion, then people start collecting memories and things, and, every, yeah. and everybody's all of a sudden knew him. So yeah, what you and, get. and you know, Vincent and, and, and Teo, because Teo was also, you know, uh, died. Yeah. None of the, yeah. the family couldn't really defend the position, so it was, it was really a free-for-all, and people were coming In up way, with, yeah, with yeah, the yeah, craziest yeah. theories, yeah. and, and so it was very, when we were doing the investigation, yeah. and you remember when we came yeah, to yeah, see yeah, exactly. you like, yeah, yeah, three yeah. years ago, and we're like, you know, Teo, what is the truth? What's you know, this? what's this? <laughs> is this right? Is that right? What's this theory? You know, and you gave yeah. us a reading list and we, we went off and we read it and then we still had all these questions and, yeah. Yeah. and so it seemed very natural to us to, to do a mystery story. Well, and know? the wonderful thing is, I think in the film is one, there's, there's a sequence where Armand talks to Marguerite Cachet and, and, and then she says, and I like it very much, she says, well, you're so occupied with his death, but what do you know about his life? Yeah, well, I mean, and that's that, in fact, of course, is the most, one of the most important questions. And it's because he painted in his life and he made paintings during his life, and that's why we know him. Yeah. Of course, this, this tragic story that, that Dick Langston is, is part of it as well. Yeah. But it's the paintings that had to do it in the first way. Absolutely. And you see him, and you see him think, and then he goes back to to Arrow, and you see these wonderful paintings coming by, as like Dr. Harvest from our collection. We've got the Sowa and all these things. Yeah, and he's so looking at things in the with a different eye, and he. Yeah, and that's. Uh, but this is this is our storyboard in the sense of Auvers. Oh, from 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 what uh, um, we're not quite sure what what happened with Vincent that he didn't actually kill kill himself. And uh, as everybody uh, at the time also certainly was 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 aware of in, within the family, <coughs> he was buried in Auvers. And Theo, uh, who has been very close to him all his life, and of course the whole film also goes about this letter that 
Armand Rollou has a letter that was not delivered to Fio, yeah. which was with the G News in Arles and was kept back. And when they heard that Vincent had shot himself, that they gave the letter to Roulin from Nobel, we've still got this letter, maybe you can, can mail it to his yeah. brother. And then Armand goes to Paris to find Fio and, and, yeah, and take and it in, take in it. person with their condolences. Yeah. And, and, you know, Armand Roulon was a very. Uh, because you, you might think the postman was the obvious choice, but, but the yeah. trouble with the postman is that we know his personality from the letters, yeah. 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 And, and we know that he was a staunch like, supporter of Vincent. He was and a dear friend, even. Yeah. I mean, he, was, he, was, he was perhaps the closest friend he had in Ireland. Yeah. I mean, he didn't have that many friends, but the, the, when you also a couple of letters that Vincent wrote from, from Saint Remy to Roulin, and we have one letter also from Roulin back. Yeah. It's my dearest friend. Yeah, and you, and that's, that's not very common in, in France to yeah. call someone your dearest friend in, they're, they're in, in, in the letter. They're very affectionate. And so we thought that the postman, he would be, you know, if we, we sent him to a vet, he would just be too much like something be, happened to him. No, he would friend. be completely out of his way because, of course, well, Omar was younger, of course, he can go to a yeah. vet. But indeed, with Roland, I mean, we know that he, he, probably, he probably couldn't read. Yeah. So that's okay. why, and you used it, I think, in the film because yeah. there's a letter that he tries to read, and he yeah. just stumbles, and, and almost, oh, let me. Yeah, he doesn't. Give it he doesn't me. read very well, exactly. and so his, his son has to read. And his and, other and son, his son, his son actually, but you know, became a detective, well, a gendarme in, a gendarme, in, in, yeah. in yeah. Algeria. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean. The great thing about Armand is we don't really know anything about him apart from he came no. as gendarme and he was yeah. a blacksmith. And was a bla what yeah, happened in between? <laughs> between so yeah. well, you look, we, yeah. we, we, and we took our inspiration from the painting because it's such yeah. a brilliant painting. And, and you know, we oh, do yeah. have another gendarme in the film which is based upon your Amir. portrait. And then, uh, and then, yeah, you mean the one? Oh no, it's only one, one, one eye. Did he yeah, go more? So we used, yeah. we used the, the painting that's here yeah. in the museum, yeah. Portrait of One-Eyed Man, which was actually an inmate at the uh, San Ramon yeah, so Asylum. Yeah, and we turned well, him into a policeman, <laughs> you know. So, yeah. but uh, he looked like he was—he was pretty scary. So yeah. we thought he'd be good for a, a policeman. So sometimes we had to do translation like that, yeah. you know. Yeah. No, but I think it's, it's, it's very well done, and uh, I loved it. Oh, good. <laughs> so, so for, for that matter, it's a feast for the eyes. And uh, well, let's see what the people think. So uh, enjoy the movie, loving Vincent.